after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the U.S. Navy lacked equal competitors. America's next-generation surface warships were developed to attack coastal targets using long-range cannons as their primary firepower to save costs instead of Tomahawk cruise missiles, which cost millions of dollars each. In the 2000s, the DDG-1000 Jumgward Star Destroyer was the first of the U.S. Navy's next-generation destroyers, equipped with futuristic technology. It required only a crew of 95 men instead of the 300 found on the Alibur-class destroyers. It is expected that 32 Jumgward-class destroyers will replace the Alibur class. The first ship, the USS Jumpward, had a sci-fi-like design, with a larger submerged hull than the superstructure, which reduced the ship radar cross-section, equivalent to a small fishing boat. The ship has a displacement of up to 15,656 long tons, can reach a maximum speed of up to 30 knots. In terms of armament, in addition to two electromagnetic cannons, the Zamgward is equipped with 80 shells Mark 57 VLS launchers. These launchers are compatible with Tomahawk ground attack cruise missiles, ASROC anti submarine missiles, or 4C Sparrow medium range air defense missiles. Jumgward's spacious fly deck and hangar can accommodate up to three MQ 8B Fire Scout UAVs or 2MH-60R helicopters, armed with Hellfire anti-tank missiles or torpedoes. In addition, Jumgward is also equipped with a dual-band sonar, capable of hunting submarines, but lacks torpedoes like the Alibur-class destroyer. Jumgward's required crew was much less than that of an Alibur destroyer, However, this led to concern that, with a crew so small, it could not be enough in the event of combat damage. By 2008, a new challenge for the U.S. military, China's rapidly growing surface ships, submarines, cruise missiles, and anti-ship missiles. Worse, the electromagnetic cannon on Zoom World could not be put into use because it was too complicated in technology. GPS-guided LRLAP projectiles cost up to $800,000 each, about the same as a Tomahawk cruise missile. In the end, the U.S. Navy had to remove two electromagnetic cannons on Zoom World. Although a revolutionary weapon, but the cost was too expensive, the program had to be cancelled. In 2008, the U.S. Navy only agreed to build two Zoom Wars. In an attempt to save the project, a third ship, the Lyndon B. Johnson, was launched in 2018. Each jump world costs about $4.5 billion, not including $10 billion in development costs. Like the F-35 and the leader combat ship, the jump world's rising cost is due to the Navy's ambition to integrate completely new and proven technologies. As a result, the Zoom World broke down while sailing through the Panama Canal 
in November 2016. A solution to reduce costs is applied. Instead of using the powerful SPY-4 radar, it will be replaced with the SPY-3 radar. This replacement saved $80 million per ship, but the airshot capability was significantly reduced. Although Zoomgor's VLS launchers are compatible with a wide range of U.S. Navy missiles. These missiles, however, are dependent on the Aegis combat system, which Zoomgor does not equip. Zoomgor's closing weapon system, which was downgraded from the 57mm cannons to the 30mm cannons, with much less performance. Where three Zoomgord class destroyers help increase the US Navy's combat capability? No, it is simply that these warships have so far lacked weapons, anti ship missiles, anti submarine torpedoes, and long range anti aircraft missiles. Zoomgord has even fewer missile launchers than the Aliber class destroyers. Ticonderoga class cruisers or Ohio class attack submarines. But these warships are all cheaper, and even the Ohio class submarines have more secret capabilities than the Zomgord. My video about the Zomgord destroyer ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos. Tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại quý vị và các bạn trong các video tiếp theo.